right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader-related, related to leading yourself and leading others. So today's going to be a quick one. I just want to share a thought that uh, I had, and it's re- involving something that everybody deals with, every leader out there, every human being out there, and that is the P word, problems. All of us have them. We've all had them at times, bigger than others, sometimes more than others. We all deal with them. So part of this is figuring out how to deal with them. As a leader, how I deal with problems affects how other people are going to deal with problems and how I set a tone for my organization for how we handle challenges and obstacles. So what was interesting is I was uh, mountain biking uh, a couple weekends ago, and it was a really tough ride. It was like 13 miles, super hilly, up and down. I haven't mountain biked a lot, so this was a relatively new experience for me. I had borrowed a uh, friend's bike, and uh, so I wasn't really familiar with the bike itself. And as we began this journey, it was like maybe, you know, half a mile in to this 13-mile bike ride. And I realized, like, okay, I'm 6'3", 240 pounds. This bike is not really set up for me. I didn't really take the time up front to kind of figure out, okay, is the seat high enough? Are the handlebars in the right spot? And I, you know, it was a friend's bike. I really wasn't going to toy around with it too much. But uh, I started going. I realized, okay, this seat is like not in the right place. And it is not feeling good half a mile in. So I'm going and I'm thinking, okay, well, you know what? Let me just deal with it and, you know, I'll just suck it up and go through it, go forward with my ride. So, you know, I keep going. I probably another half mile goes by and I'm like, okay, this is getting a lot worse, a lot more uncomfortable and I got to stop and adjust this seat. So I do, you know, I stop, I move the seat, I move it down a little bit, I tilt it a little bit and all of a sudden it's like my whole world has changed. I get back on the bike and I'm now riding totally, you know, much more comfortably. Um, And what it made me realize is like, okay, I could have very easily continued with that bike ride, uh, made the decision and not stop because stopping slowed me down to deal with that problem. And maybe it's just better just to keep going and then the problem will go away. Maybe I'll just, you know, my butt will get numb and I won't even feel the discomfort of the scene anymore. And it won't really bother me anymore. The problem, you know, will kind of just evaporate and go away on its own. It'll dissipate. And in reality, leaders feel think like that all the time. And I've gotten caught in that many, many, many times where you see a problem, you see maybe the start of a problem and you don't deal with it. You figure, OK, well, let me kind of turn a blind eye to it or let it go. And just time will kind of heal it and it'll just, you know, get it go away as a problem. Very rarely does that happen. I'm not going to say never, but very rarely do problems that a leader can spot, because if he can spot it, you know it's, it's, it's sizable enough so it's hit your radar screen. Very rarely do these things have a way of just solving themselves. Um, now, there are some things that maybe you make a conscious decision you're not going to address, you're not going to get involved in. Maybe it's a drama situation or something like that that just doesn't really, it's not worth your time, or your effort, or your attention. But at the same point, I see leaders most of the time, the problems that they ignore are problems that they shouldn't ignore. Whether it's a gut feeling about someone, maybe it's a conflict that's going on, maybe it's a a systems problem in their organization or a service problem or a quality problem, whatever it is, and they just assume that, okay, time will kind of fix it, doesn't happen. So going back to that bike ride, I know I would not have been able to make it 13 miles had I not addressed it. Now, yeah, granted, it might have taken me a minute or two on the side of the road, so I lost a little time up front. But at the same point, you know, one, I wasn't going to set any kind of record. I just wanted to have a good workout and a, and a great ride. And that wasn't going to happen had I not adjusted the seat. So problems have a way, and I've got a good friend, Michael Altshuler, who's out there. I'll give him a little props. He tells a story about when he does workshops, he'll have somebody hold a glass of water out just like this. And it's really not that big of a deal, right? It's not that heavy. I was talking to a group the other day about this. And, uh, you know, but if you held it out there for like 45 minutes, this is going to really feel heavy. Your arm's going to be like shaking and stuff. So this represents your problems, your issue. Maybe it's your negative self-talk or whatever it is. And ultimately, that's just going to get worse and worse. And if we don't deal with it, it's going to weigh us down and get heavier and heavier and drag us down. So small little example on the bike seat. um, But it made me realize the importance of getting the message out there about making sure those problems that you see that you have, just jump in and deal with them. Uh, Take some action, have a conversation, bring the parties together, whatever the case is. 
you know, the other in this ride, the other thing that was really bothering me, I would again didn't have my own helmet. Now I got a big head, big noggin. It's a big brain, so you can get a big head. Uh, no, but uh, you know, my my helmet was like killing me. And uh, at first, yeah, I didn't really notice it too much. But as the ride kept going, and I just this helmet couldn't adjust any any bigger. So I'm realizing, okay, well, um, my options are either one of three things. Either I just keep going with this helmet um, and endure the pain. I take off the helmet and ride without a helmet, which I wasn't willing to do. It was really rocky, hilly terrain and going pretty fast. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. That was not an option. And the other one was that I don't ride. I stopped the ride, which I wasn't willing to do either. So if that's the case, and I've got three options there, two of which are really not viable options, and I'm left with the single option that's to continue riding, well, then I have to say, listen, this is a problem, but I can't do anything about it, right? So it's a totally different type of problem. It's a problem that I really have no control over. I can't remanufacture the bike helmet. I can't shrink my head. I can't do anything about it. And I've made the decision I'm going to do this ride, so I can't really do anything about it. So what sense does it make to think about it, dwell on it, and fret about it, and stress about it, and worry about it, and let this affect my ride? So all I could do was really kind of put it out of my my head. No pun intended there. But really just put it out of my brain and stop thinking about it, right? Just keep riding, enjoy the ride, get the most out of it. Now when I got done, I took the helmet off. Wow, that was like a, a major moment there. But I realized I couldn't do anything about that. So when you think about the issues and the problems you have, you've got to ask yourself, is this something that I have control or influence over? Can I do something about it? Are the options, the uh, uh, viable options or alternatives? If not, then I've just got to press on and not worry about it, not focus on it. Okay, those are those are the words of wisdom when it comes to problems um, and really quick, I know podcast here, but I had those thoughts. I want to get them out. I figured it could help some, some of you that might have some issues, some stuff going on right now, take some action or decide, Hey, you know what? Not something I have control over. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So hopefully this uh, was helpful. Enjoy your day. Keep listening, liking, subscribing, sharing comments, all that kind of good stuff. I greatly appreciate you. Thanks. Bye.